Hello and welcome to another episode of GSE at Home. My name is Amy and today we are going to explore the air around us, think about why it's so important to us and how we can use the air to make things move and to generate electricity. We're even going to make our very own wind powered car. Let's get started. We know that there's air all around us and that's lucky for us because that air is very important to our survival. Air is what we breathe in and out of our lungs every second of every day because it contains a gas that we need to survive. What gas am I talking about? Of course, oxygen. We need to take oxygen into our bodies because we use it to make energy that allows us to move and carry on with our daily lives. Without oxygen, we wouldn't survive. Let's take a deep breath together now. <gasps> and breathe out. So when we breathe in, the air fills up organs that we have inside our bodies. Which ones? And can you point to where they are inside your body? We're talking about our lungs, which live up here behind our ribs. There are two of them. And if we take one more deep breath together, and breathe out, we can feel our lungs filling up as we breathe in and emptying as we breathe out. So that's one thing the air is good for. Let's move on to another. You may have noticed that the title of this video is huff and puff and maybe some of you have already realised that you've heard those words before. They come from a famous story. Do you know which one? I'm talking about the story of the three little pigs. All throughout that story there are three little pigs who build houses made of different materials and there's a pesky wolf who keeps huffing and puffing trying to knock down each of the houses. Luckily, the pigs all managed to hide in the third house made of brick and stay away from the wolf. But the wolf did manage to make two of the houses fall down just with their breath. That must have been one big puff of air. It's a sweet story and one that I'm sure most of us have heard, including the adults around you. But it also shows us that air is not just something that we breathe. It's also very useful for making objects move, just like the wolf moved the houses with a giant puff of air. Quite often here in Scotland, we see objects outside being moved by air all the time. Of course, I'm talking about the wind. Wind is a type of weather and is simply the air outside moving around. When I look outside, I can see the wind moving leaves in the trees. There are plants just outside my window that move around too. I see the fur on dogs walking past being ruffled by the wind and I can see umbrellas being blown inside out on wet and windy days. Why don't you head to your window and count how many different things you can see being moved around by the wind? Wind can be really strong sometimes and has a lot of energy so it can move big objects. Wind can move something as big as a boat from a sailboat to a yacht. When the wind pushes against the sail, that provides enough energy to move the whole boat along in the water. But we can think even bigger than that again. Wind has so much movement energy because it is moving so quickly that we can use wind power to generate electricity for us to use in our homes and at work. We do this using wind turbines. The blades on a wind turbine start to rotate when there is wind. And it doesn't even have to be strong wind. Even a gentle breeze can make this happen. A generator in the turbine then spins, generating electricity. The wind turbine has transformed the movement or kinetic energy of the wind into kinetic energy of the turbine blades and then into electrical energy, which is transmitted to our homes through the national grid for us to use in our daily lives. Wind power is the fastest growing source of renewable energy in Scotland and has helped us get well on our way to reaching our target of generating all of our energy from renewable sources. When a source of energy is renewable, it means that it won't run out and will always be able to keep generating electricity that way. There will always be wind to spin the turbine blades, especially here in Scotland. Have you spotted any wind turbines or even wind farms around Scotland? And 
how many other sources of renewable energy can you name? So today for our crafty activity, we are also going to harness the power of the wind to generate energy. But instead of a turbine, we're going to make our very own wind powered car. Let's get started. There are some tricky parts of this activity, especially the parts where we have to do some cutting and making holes through cardboard and paper. I recommend you get an adult involved with this activity to help out with those parts. Here is everything you'll need today. An empty egg box or a small cardboard box, some spare cardboard, some sticky tape, a cardboard sweetie tube, empty of course, a pair of scissors, three pencils, paper or card, blue tack or plasticine, pens, crayons and colouring pencils, whatever you have in your house to colour in. A hole punch if you have one, but that's not essential. A hair dryer or fan. And adult supervision for the trickier parts, like I said, where we'll be cutting or making holes in card. So, if you've gathered up all of those bits and pieces, we can make a start on the car. We have our empty egg box here, which will act as the body or chassis of our car. What we do need to make are the wheels. I'm going to take this cardboard that I had left over from a parcel and draw four circles. I'll use a little round tub as a guide for my circle shape, but you can use whatever you have access to. I'd recommend that your circle shapes have a diameter of about five or six centimetres. You measure the diameter by measuring across the widest part of the circle. I'm going to cut out these four circle shapes carefully with my scissors. When I've got those four circles, I'm going to draw a dot as close to the centre of the circle as I can because I need to make a hole that a pencil can fit through. The cardboard that I'm using is thin enough that I can do this with the pencil that's going to fit through the hole, as long as it has a sharp enough point. If you have thicker cardboard, you may need to use scissors to help make that hole. Definitely get your adult to do this part. Next, I'm going to take my empty cardboard sweet tube. The tube that I have has a hexagon shape, but it should still work well. A tube that is round would be good to use. Cut off any extra bits from the end of the tube. And after you've done that, cut the whole tube in half so that you end up with two smaller tubes. Attach those two smaller tubes to the top of the egg box because the top of the egg box is going to be the bottom of the car. You can do this with sticky tape and make sure they're not too close together. I'm going to take a pencil and thread it through one of these small tubes now and attach a cardboard wheel at either end, making a set of wheels. Make your second set of wheels and then you can turn your car the right way up. When you push the car, it should easily roll along on the wheels that you made. Take a ball of plasticine or blue tack like this and push it down into one of the dips in the egg box like so. The next thing we're going to do is make the all important sail. Remember, the sail moves the car because when moving air has kinetic energy and meets that sail, some of that kinetic energy gets transferred to the sail and the rest of the car, which now has kinetic energy itself and starts to move. So now we know why our sail is so important, let's get making it. Take an A4 piece of paper or card and cut it in half. If you're using card like I am, it might be a good idea to trim a little bit of extra width off of the card so that it fits better onto our car and works better as a sail. Lay your sail down on a table so that the short edges are along the top and bottom. About halfway along these top and bottom edges, I'm going to mark a dot about one and a half centimetres from the edge. Using a sharp pencil, make a hole through both of these dots and then remove the pencil. Again, tricky to do, so get your adult to help. If you happen to have a hole punch at home, you can use that to make this step easier. But I don't have a hole punch, so I'll stick to using the pencil. Now, it's time for everyone's favourite bit. It's time to decorate your sail any way you want. 
Remember that your sail will fit onto your car like this with the holes at the top and bottom, so keep your sail this way when you're drawing. So I finished decorating my sail and now I'm going to attach it onto my car. Take the pencil that you used to make the holes in the sail and push it down into the plasticine or blue tack that you have in the car. This will be the mast that we attach the sail onto. We're going to thread the pencil through the bottom hole in the sail and then the top hole, making sure the decorated side sticks out. If you're using a paper sail, it's a good idea to use sticky tape to secure your sail to your mast like so. Sails made of card probably don't need this step. The final thing I'm going to do is make a tiny little flag for the top that I'm just going to make out of extra card and stick it on using sticky tape. And there you have it, we've made our own wind powered car. You can use your own breath to make it travel or even better, you can use a fan or hair dryer to make it travel even faster. Here's a top tip from me. Your sail should always be at the back of your car like so, because when the sail is at the front, your car is much more likely to tip over. All you need to do is spin the sail around like this. Why don't you make a few cars with the people around you and have a race? How far can you make your car travel using the fan? What changes could you make to the car to help it travel faster or go further? I hope you've had fun today thinking about the air and wind all around us and how we can use the energy of the wind to travel and make electricity. And don't forget to take a photo or a video of your finished wind powered car and share it with us via social media. We'd love to see it in action. Thank you so much for joining in with GSC at Home yet again and we hope to see you next time at 10am on weekdays. Until then, bye!